Um, it's been it's been very tough. You know what I mean? But I think like half of my family, uh, my friends, my son, my girlfriend, my homeboys, all that. Um, they kind of kept me level headed. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough process, but it's something I've been through before. And the uh, only thing that's kind of tough about it is you couldn't really get up and walk when you wanted to or play basketball or dribble when you want to. So now I'm in the fun aspects of rehab and the process that I am now, so it makes it a lot easier for me. John, given your current circumstances, how do you intend to go into the season this year, leading your team as best as you can, given your circumstances? Um, just be a leader. Just be somebody that, that can talk to these people, talk to talk to my teammates, do anything. Um, Brad's been a heck of a job, been stepping up and being a leader for these guys. And my job is to try to help as much as possible from my, from my experience I have. I've been in the NBA for so many years. And uh, all the guards that need help, or the, the younger guys in Rui and Sko and those guys and Justin Robinson, whatever they need help with, and just showing them the way I attack my rehab is with hard work and dedication. That's how you should attack every day at practice and every game that you do. So I'm basically like a coach this year. Besides coaching, which could be a motivation, um, rehabilitation is very hard, as you, as you already said. Do you help yourself in this process by having the mentality that I'm going to come back, or do you not want to tease yourself and just think, I'll take however long, and even if that means I miss the season? Uh, I'm in no rush. I'm in no rush. I mean, only only me can know how my body feels. I mean, everybody has a deadline of, okay, at the year point, you're supposed to be back playing basketball. It doesn't always work that way. And uh, if, whenever the doctors claim or anything like that, it, it's all up to John Wall. How your body feels? Do you feel like you can go out there and play the game that, that you love at the highest level? So I'm in no rush. And in my rehab process, I'm in a great space right now. I'm doing a lot of fun stuff that I like to do. So I'm fine. John, first of all, good luck to you in your rehab. Second of all, second of all um, you're a very community-centric guy. How do you deal with being a you know so community-driven and also trying to make sure you are able to get back on the court and also you're mentally prepared as an athlete to you know be the John Wall that we all know? Yeah, well, in this point in time being, I mean, I still got to be myself. You know, this is a great opportunity for me to whatever I want to do, or going back to school or giving back in the community or doing other stuff that I want to do off the court. I have a lot of time to do that because I'm not even playing basketball. But at the same time, I still be here when the team is here to work out, make sure I get my rehab in, do the extra work that I have to do. But at the same time, me, John Waller, what I do off the court is being in the community. That's still going to be an aspect that I really want to hit at a high level because that's something I love to do. And I think that was the toughest part was like uh, when I was in my backpack, get where I wasn't really walking as much so I couldn't move around and do the things I want to do like I usually do every year. But... I'm in a better spot now, so I'm fine and it's all going to stay the same. John, first of all, hey, welcome back. Um, when Ted Leonsis uh, made the change at the general manager position uh, in April, he talked about uh, changing the team culture. What do you think was wrong with the team culture last year, and how do you, as a, as a leader of the team, try to work on improving that and coming back and making sure that, that things like that don't, don't happen? I wouldn't even just say last year. I think just in the years past, I mean, we always it's always tough to play with a team that got so many guys on one-year deals. Everybody's trying to play at a high level and make sure they get theirs. Uh, I think the front office is doing a great job just trying to high, have high uh, characteristic guys, guys that want to play basketball the right way, great IQ. Um, that's the biggest factor, I mean, and also what we said before, like stuff that we, we go through as a team, you have to keep it as a group, as a family. Anything that gets outside kind of hurts your team. And I think the last couple of years, that's what we dealt with. If we had any problems in practice or in the locker room, it got out. And that you never want to break that burden. It's, this is my brother, this is my family. So it's like if your mom telling you something, your best friend tell you something, you don't want the next person to know about it. And I think that's what kind of hurt our teams the last couple of years. But we keep a great group of guys together that trust each other, that's willing to fight for each other and want to have each other back. I think they'd be totally fine. Uh, John, uh, hopefully you recover soon. How difficult has it been to be on the sidelines just watching your teammates struggle? And how do you prepare yourself mentally for this upcoming season, knowing that, like you just said, you don't want to rush it, but you're a competitor. You want to be out there playing and competing. Um, it's definitely tough, man. Whenever I got to see her and watch these guys play basketball or work out or do anything like that, that's the toughest part for me. But um, the mental aspect is kind of easy for me. I've been through injuries before, and like I said, there's nothing I can control. I wish I didn't have the problems I had, but it is what it is. But um, I came back early from some injuries before and made other things worse. So my job now is to make sure my body is fully healthy with no injuries where I'm not compensating on one thing and hurting something else. Hey, John. Um... Troy Brown, on paper, he's listed as a three, but a lot of people flirted with him 
being able to play the one with you being out and having, you know, a, 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 you know, carousel of point guards now. What do you think about Troy playing the one? What have you seen from him as a, as a one? And what are some of his advantages playing? What can he improve on? Uh, I think Troy's just a, a guy that you really don't have a position for him. He's just an all-around player. Like, he does a great job of cutting, great job of rebounding. Uh, he's doing a better job of knocking down shots. But he's, he's very versatile. And I think him being at the point guard position can help at times. You know, he's a taller guy. Like, Thomas Sadaransky was a little bit like a six, 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 seven point guard. You know? He can make plays. He can do things. I think he's just more comfortable with the ball in his hands. So we have to find a way to make him make his job a lot easier. Sometimes you might not have the ball a lot because Brad might be at the point. But whenever you do, be aggressive and try to find people also on the team. John, what'd you make of uh, just the front office changes this summer? Tommy being elevated. You've obviously known Tommy forever. What's what's your relationship been like with him since he's gotten the job? Has it changed at all? Um, my relationship with Tommy's always been at a high level since I first got drafted there. So um, to see him get an opportunity like that is always a blessing and great for somebody to get that job. And now it's all to see what he can do with it. What adjustments can he make for the team? What can he do for the organization to change things around? Um, it's a lot difficult and different without me playing, but I think he's doing a great job of adding the pieces he can. Um, believing in the guys that he did add and the guys that he did sign back. So that's a big key for him. That's a great stepping stone for where we're trying to go. And uh, then just get the show on the road. John, were you aware of Rui uh, and Gonzaga? And um, if you were, how had watching him on the court now, how has your perception about him changed or evolved? Um, it's kind of different. I mean, uh, I watch him a lot. All I do is watch basketball all day. So girls, boys, don't matter, little kids. So I watch him a lot. Um, but it's kind of tough. I've seen him play a little bit, but I watched him play when he was just playing over there in uh, China. He was doing a great job. Even though his team wasn't as great, he was the main focus. Um, I think he's, he's in between the twin of a three and a four. And it's a new NBA now, so it's great for him where he can space the floor and shoot. He's very athletic. He's a quiet kid, but I think he's a humble guy that lets the game come to him. He's not going to force the issue, and I think that's something that's great for him. So I'm kind of ready to see him get going in training camp and throughout preseason to really give you a better aspect of that. John, when you talk about being a guy who loves to just watch hoops, uh, what if, and you're also a staple at the Mystics games, obviously, what, what have you thought about watching them on their run and, and just kind of just, just, just seeing, you know, Della Don, the greatness up close? Well, I've seen it for a long time with her. Uh, so she's that talented player. And uh, when she first came here, it was great and excited to see her come here to get a superstar talent like that. But um, it's great. I was just telling David, I was just yesterday, I was like, the way they move the ball as a team and play is great. I mean, you look at every aspect of their team, they don't have a weak point on the, on the court. Anybody can score one through five, but they know who to go to when the, when the game's on the line. They know how to move the ball. And, got, and, the, and the girls know their role very well, so you give a, a lot of credit to them, a lot of credit to their coaches. And like you said, Ariel Atkins said yesterday, she don't care if she's going 50 or zero. I'm just trying to win a championship. And that's the kind of aspect and character you want on your team because it's going to be nice when the best player don't have a great night. It's going to be nice when you have a low game. But what can you do? on the basketball court to help your team win. Sometimes you might score 30, sometimes you might get 20 assists, you might get 10 steals. Those are the type of people you want to have on your team, and that's what they have. And I think they would have won it last year if Emma was playing. You see how different they are with her, so I think they, they got a great chance. They don't, they don't want to know they have to win two more. But it's been great to watch them running back, like they said, and the excitement they have brought to the city. John, um, as a former first round, first round draft pick, uh, what would you advise to Rui for his rookie season? Um, it's a lot different now. The whole NBA has changed. So uh, I think just come in and play, play your game. Be yourself. Uh, listen as much as you can to the veteran guys and let those guys teach you and tell you what the, the do's and don'ts in the league. Um, enjoy the process. It goes by very fast. I'm already in year 10. feel like I got drafted yesterday. So that's the main facts I got for him.